I'm Wendy Orr and I'm an author, which means my job is making up stories. And so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about some stories. But first of all, I'm just going to say that I think this is quite special because you might be listening to me, say, from New Jersey. And you might be in grade three, maybe, in New Jersey. And I'm here in Australia, on the other side of the world. And do you know what else? If it's spring in New Jersey, if it's spring anywhere in the United States or Canada or England or anywhere in Europe or anywhere in South America, it's fall here. And when it's summer where you are, it's winter here. So that's pretty funny. So here I am on the other side of the world. And I thought I would read to you first a little bit from Nim's Island. And this is the cover of Nim's Island that most of you know. And there are lots of covers of Nim's Island. And you can go to Pinterest to see a whole bunch, about 27, I think, different covers. And this is the very start of the story. In a palm tree, on an island, in the middle of the wide blue sea was a girl. Nim's hair was wild, her eyes were bright, and around her neck she wore three cords. One was for a spyglass, one for a whirly whistling shell, and the other a fat red pocket knife in a sheath. With the spyglass at her eye, she watched her father's boat, it sailed out through the reef to the deeper dark ocean, and Jack turned to wave, and Nim waved back, though she knew he couldn't see. Then the white sails caught the wind and blew him out of sight, and Nim was alone. For three days and three nights, whatever happened or needed doing, Nim would do it. Nim's pretty good at doing things. Do you know when I first thought of that story, I was nine years old and we were going to visit my grandparents who lived on Vancouver Island in Canada. We were going on a ferry and we went past a little tiny island and I thought, oh, I'd love to run away and live on an island. And I started writing that story when we got home. And a long time later, when I was a grown up author, I was writing the story of a little girl living on an island, writing to an author, and I thought, I need to remember what it feels like to be that nine-year-old girl who wanted to be able to do things and make things and be good at things because I wasn't always quite as active of that. I wasn't always quite as actual good at actually doing those things Sometimes I was better at daydreaming and writing stories than being the hero. But when you write a story, you can always be the hero if you want. Or you could be the bad guy and have a nice hero. But when you write a story, you make up a whole world. You can make up people. You can make up animals. You can make up a world like a movie in your head. And that's why it's fun to write stories. And of course, Nim's Island did become a real movie up on the screen. But the most fun part is actually making up the stories for me, even though the movie was a lot of fun. And I'm going to show you just one other one. And this is Lost, a dog called Bear. I said I'm just going to show you one. I'm going to show you a whole bunch, but I'll just read to you the first couple of paragraphs of this one because this is part of a set called the Rainbow Street Animal Shelter Series. So there's Bear and Missing, a cat called Buster, Wanted, a guinea pig called Henry, and I have to tell you, I did have a guinea pig called Henry, and I did have a dog called Bear and abandoned a lion called Kiki. Now I haven't owned a lion, but the story is actually about some friends of my parents when I was a little girl. 
and they were given a lion, which was actually a very bad idea. Who knew? And this is stolen a pony called Pebbles and discovered a beagle called Bella. So there's lots of them, but I'm just going to read you the first little bit of Lost, a dog called Bear. What Bear liked almost more than anything else in the world was riding in the back of the pickup truck. He liked racing from side to side to see everything going past, sniffing the furs, sorry, sniffing the wind as it flapped his jowls and ruffled his fur and barking at dogs on the ground. The other thing Bear liked almost more than anything else in the world was bossing sheep and making them go where he wanted. But what he liked best of all, more than anything else in the world, was Logan, because Logan was his boy. And here's a picture of, of Bear chasing the sheep. So that's a very different story from Nim's Island because the stories in the Rainbow Street Shelter could be true. A lot of them are based on adventures that I had when I was a child or when I was an adult. Bear was a dog of ours who ran away and got lost on the beach. But I mixed it up with another dog story of our very first dog, Jack, who jumped over the fence and jumped into the back of somebody else's pickup truck and ended up a long, long way away. And it was quite an adventure finding him. So when you write stories, the wonderful thing is you can take bits of real things that you know about. You can take bits of your life. You can take bits of stories that other people have told you about their lives. Maybe your, your grandmother's told you a story about when she was young or your cousin who lives in another side of the country or in another country has told you a story about their life and they don't mind if, if you pretend to have a life like that. Or you can make something up a little bit crazy because Nim's Island is not completely realistic. So if you're reading stories or writing stories, just have lots of fun with them and go on doing it, go on reading and go on writing and have fun. Bye now.